Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. In my last video, I gave you an overview of my home lab upgrade. We spoke about why I need to upgrade it because of my internet. I need to take full advantage of that two gigabit per second symmetric link. And we also spoke about the triple MSO1 cluster that I'm building. I also spoke about a proposed network setup that I was gonna implement, but I was scratching my head and there's a few things that I wanted from this cluster that I couldn't get with my existing setup. That's why I've had to buy, I say had to, that's why I've bought uh, a Unify aggregation switch. Not the Pro, just the ASFP model, but the reason I bought that is so that I can have some lags in my network. Not the kind of lag that's gonna increase my ping, link aggregation. That means that I can run multiple NICs as though they are one. Now, for a quick primer on lags, it doesn't mean that I can put the two tens together and get 20 gigabit. What it means is I can have two running at 10 at the same time. So basically, imagine you could have two devices both running at 10 gigs at the same time. That obviously gives you a theoretical max throughput of 20 gigabits, but again, you only get the speed of a single link on a single device. You can't put this together. So what does that mean in my network? Well, let's take a look at a diagram and I'll explain to you what the changes are and why I'm gonna put them in place. Now, as always, I want your critique on this. There'll be people out there that are far more network savvy than I am. But what I'm thinking of is this. Now, in the last video, I mentioned that my internet was going into one of my MSO1s. That's not strictly true. If you look on this diagram in the bottom left corner, you'll see that I have my internet going into a switch, and then going into an RJ45 on one of my MSO1s. Now, the reason I've done this is originally, I wanted to be able to split my WAN in the same way that I did previously on my Sophos XG. Now, it's a little bit different with how I have this set up because I'm using a WAS 110 ONT SFP module. That allows me to do some funky stuff with bypassing my modem and to take advantage of that i can't use a virtual bridge like i did before i've actually got to do a nic pass through now i haven't actually tested whether i can now do the same setup as previously but good news is i have that switch in the bottom corner so currently what that switch is doing is simply changing the sfp into an rj45 now that's good for a few reasons, predominantly because it means that I can save an SFP module, which is capable of 10 gig, remember my internet's only two gig, and it means I just use a two and a half gig RJ45. So that makes that design around having a lag possible, especially without any expansion. But as you can see, and I'll talk about that in a minute, I am considering putting in an additional network card. Now, if you look at that switch on the diagram, that is actually the switch I have, and I'll link it in the description below. Seems to be pretty much the best budget friendly you can get, especially if you want it managed as well. Now, what I could do on that is actually run, and I'll show you a diagram later, is an additional two network ports off that switch going into the other MSO1s if I wanted to replicate OpenSense onto those. I haven't tested that and I will be testing it soon, but I hope it's possible. The difficulty is that because that ONT module, that SFP stick is technically a little computer on a chip, I'm not sure how it's gonna behave with being registered on two machines at the same time. I'll have to find that out. But maybe in a sense of an active passive like I'm used to, maybe that isn't an issue. Anyway, let's get on to the biggest change, as you can see in the middle of this diagram. I've gone for the Unify switch aggregation. Now, this isn't a pro model, that would be overkill, albeit if you're listening Unify, I'm not averse to trying one out. I thought I'd get this one because it had parity with a lot of the microtic stuff, and also it's already that single pane of glass that I'm used to through the Unify controller. So that's gonna make things a lot simpler to implement. And like I've said before, I do love their kit, their APs, their switches, they're all top notch. So if you focus on the left hand side of the diagram, you'll see that for my previous video, I've now got two SFP modules assigned to OpenSense. And that's where that lag is gonna come in. 
So that lag is basically going to be my LAN. I've effectively doubled the number of ports that are assigned to my LAN. And those are gonna go into that Unify switch aggregation. And effectively what I'm doing is putting most of the heavy lifting onto the aggregation switch, which is designed for those heavier traffic flows. So you'll see that I've got the lag in there. And you'll also see that I've changed how the MSO1s. So each of those MSO1s will also have one of their SFPs, which will be the NIC that hosts and does all of the VM traffic. That will also go into the aggregation port. Now, unfortunately, I'm actually one port short. So I've got a total here of 12 SFP ports. If I had 13, I could actually probably lag everything on here. So each MSO1, even the VMs would be lagged. So again, you could think of it as having two virtual machines on one of those running at 10 gig at the same time. That's actually massively overkill for what I need. And actually, I've already got, if you remember, that backhaul ring on the Thunderbolt 4 cables, which is running at 25 gigabits per second. So already faster than two SFP plus ports anyway. The majority of what I will be using the SFP ports for is probably like browsing or accessing a service, Jellyfin or Plex or copying some files and a theoretical max throughput of one gigabyte per second is gonna be plenty for that. Sure, faster is nicer, but it's gonna cost a lot more money to get this faster. I would need faster NICs and a faster switch, and it's just overkill for what I need. Now, the rest of that switch is gonna be taken up by one port for my NAS. Now, you might be thinking, why don't I put a lag on my NAS? And I did do a bit of thinking about this, but that NAS is full of spinning rust. It has 15 hard disk drives in it. And I know that a 10 gigabit NIC is already going to saturate that because when I've done performance tests, the max read and write I get from it is about 500 megabytes per second. So I've already got double that throughput. Having double that again, so 20 gigabit, makes no sense because I can't read any faster and I can't write any faster. If it was an NVMe NAS, yeah, sure. You'd probably want two or three or hell, you'd probably go for 25 gigabit NICs or faster to take full advantage of that. I don't have that, maybe something in the future, but for now I'm more than happy with just having a single connection. The other two ports on the switch are gonna be that lag to the 48 Pro. Now, I might drop that down to just one, and that's because again, most of the stuff that I'm gonna have plugged into my old switch or my bigger 48 PoE switch, those are just, by their nature, one gigabit RJ45s. And typically they're things like my gaming PC, laptops over the Wi-Fi, IoT devices, and they're not gonna make a 10 gig NIC sweat. So I might actually drop that down and then free up another 10 gig SFP plus port if I need it. Finally, on that switch, again, we'll have two free SFP plus ports that are on there. Maybe that means that I can do a lag on two of my MSO1s. Maybe I'll have two of them for heavier workflows or more intense traffic workflows and one of them for less intense workflows. I don't know, but I've got a little bit of flexibility there. One key change again on this diagram is if you look on the bottom left machine, which is hosting the OpenSense, is I put another NIC in there. Well, that's not strictly true. I haven't bought it yet. I'm still doing some research. I do actually have some Mellanox Connect X3s, which I might put in there, but they're not that power efficient anymore. And they do stop it going down into lower C power states. So the reason I'm having to get an additional NIC in this machine is because, well, yeah, you can see on the diagram, those bottom two SFP ports that are on the machine itself, they're gonna be fully taken up by the OpenSense. So if I wanna have my virtual machines on that machine using a 10 gigabit NIC, I'm gonna to have to get some more ports. So that's what I'm proposing, and that will then go into that aggregation switch, as you can see. So that's basically my refreshed idea of my old network. Let me know what you think. Like I said, I will be experimenting with sharing my internet connection through that small switch to other MSO1s, and I'll let you know how that goes. Next video, we're actually gonna be getting into some of the configuration. So I'll show you how I set up my Proxmox cluster. I'll show you how I've set up that ring network. 
We'll get on to covering Ceph. Hopefully that might be a video after. We'll see how we get to. And I'll also cover some of the pitfalls that I had when I migrated off my existing infrastructure and onto this one. It's pretty straightforward, but there are a few gotchas, especially when it comes to the order in which you do things like don't shut off your DNS, don't shut off your pie hole, etc. Make sure you've migrated that first so that you can pull containers and build things. Also, it can get a bit funky with routing and making sure you pull out the right trunk port and put it into your new firewall without taking everything out. Anyway, let me know what you think about this, which one you would go for or anything obvious that I'm missing. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.